What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. So today's video, we should have a pretty quick and easy one. Um, I always say that and it bites me in the butt every time. But today I'm gonna be showing you guys a very cheap way to change the look of your vehicle or truck. That doesn't take a whole lot of work um, and it has a pretty good return on investment. Uh, so if you're new here, let me show you guys. That is my 2006 Ram 3500 Cummins. I bought it a few months ago and I've slowly been going through and kind of changing and upgrading all the different things I want to change on the thing. Uh, when I bought it, it was a totally stock grandpa truck and we're slowly trying to turn it away from that. Uh, the project I want to work on today, which is something you guys uh, can probably tell what it is based on the title of the video I'm guessing, is we're going to be debadging the truck. Now, as you guys can see, there's not a whole lot of badging on the truck as is, except for this uh, little Cummins badge right there and the Ram 3500. And of course that big door stripe down the side, which probably not going to address today because that's kind of going to be a different ordeal that I'll show you guys later. But uh, I figured this is something simple that maybe a lot of people are intimidated by or maybe they don't even think about doing. So I figured I would show you guys just how easy it is to kind of go through that process and take those badges off the truck to change the look. Now I'm going to say this, before you start pulling off badges, do a little bit of research on your vehicle to see if there is holes underneath the badges. Some badges or some uh, generations of trucks or vehicles, they have little alignment holes behind the badge. And so if you pull it off, you're going to have some holes left behind. Uh, some people may be okay with that. Some people may really not like that. Um, or maybe you're going through and replacing it with a different set of badges, like some blacked out stuff. Um, either way, do a little bit of research just to make sure you're not uh, left with an unhappy result. Um, so I don't want to do a whole lot of talking here in the beginning. Let me show you guys kind of the main supplies you're going to want or need, and then we're going to get to work on the truck almost forgot all this stuff I'm about to show you should be linked down in the description below uh, just about everything I do to this truck should be linked down in the description below so if you're looking at doing the same thing uh, go check down there it's a great way to support the channel um, the channel gets a very small cutback um, which allows me to keep making these kind of videos for you guys so with that said now let's get to work all right guys let me show you guys the stuff that I'm gonna be using and what I would recommend for you guys Starting off with some heavy weight fishing line. I don't remember the weight on this thing, but it worked phenomenally. It slides in behind the emblems and cuts the adhesive like a little cheese cutter back there. Worked great. Now this is a 3M eraser wheel. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a giant eraser wheel. It's used to get the adhesive off the paint of the truck after you get the plastic emblems off. Here's a little off-brand one. I'm telling you guys, these things are a lifesaver. Next, you're going to need some sort of drill. I'm using a Milwaukee one because I like paying an arm and a leg for my tools. But the drill is just used to spin the eraser wheel. It's super simple. Any real drill should work for you just fine. Last but not least, there's some plastic auto trim removal tools. These aren't exactly necessary, but if the emblems are being stubborn, they can come in handy to help pry them off without damaging the paint. So if you're doing this on a cooler day or in the evening after the sun has gone down, I'd recommend using a heat gun to heat up the adhesive behind the emblems. For me, this is almost a 100 degree day and the paint is looking like it's around 150 degrees. So I think it's pretty safe to say that I'm not going to be using a heat gun for this project. Alright, so first step that I would recommend is just giving the truck a general wash down around the emblems to kind of get that heavy dirt and grime off and from around the edges of the emblems themselves. They tend to trap some pretty heavy dirt and grime that you don't want to be grinding into your paint. As you can see, it's not really an extensive wash, just try to get that big stuff off so you're not dealing with it when you're taking off these emblems. Alright, so here comes the fun part, actually taking them off with the fishing line. I'm playing this in real time so you can see just how easy it was. I mean, these things came off like butter. Um, the heat outside really softened up the adhesive in the back, and they just came right on off. It, honestly, better than I, even I expected. 
So there you go. The first emblem is off, and we're left with the adhesive on the back. What was that? Uh, 10 seconds or so? Like I said, this is a pretty darn easy project to take on. Just about anybody can do this one. So, since you guys have seen how it works, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this emblem. Not to bore you guys too much. We want to make this quick, remember? I'm trying to stick to my word on this one. And voila. Now we're left with this nice, gross-looking, sticky mess of the adhesive left behind. Trust me, if you bought the eraser wheel at this point, you are going to be thinking yourself big time. Now at this point, if you didn't wash it the first go-around, I would highly recommend giving it a quick wash down now. Um, as you can see, I'm doing it twice. We really, really want to get all the loose dirt and grime away from the paint before we take this erasure wheel to it. The last thing you want is the erasure wheel picking up on some old dirt or rocks that were stuck back there and putting some scratches in your paint. It's just going to make your life harder down the road. So now it's time to break out the power tools. We got the eraser wheel out, and as you can see, it peels off that adhesive nice and easy and because of the rubbery compound it has it's really easy on the paint itself don't let the uh, sped up footage fool you this honestly took about two to three minutes tops to get this emblem off and don't worry guys i will be showing you guys how to address that outline around the emblem that you guys saw it is a problem that you tend to run into with older vehicles such as this one so I'm going to go through and use the erase wheel to get the rest of this adhesive off. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tip here. If the eraser wheel is spinning downwards, put it at the top of the adhesive. If it's spinning upwards, put it at the bottom. It kind of helps pull up or peel up the adhesive as opposed to trying to eat through it. That's just my little tip for you guys after uh, having done this quite a bit in my time. And just like that, we have this door and fender just about done. All the hard work is done, and we are in this project maybe 15 or 20 minutes. I told you, it was a pretty quick and easy one. Alright, so I forgot to show you guys this one at the beginning of the video, but it's just a simple tar and grease remover. Any sort of adhesive remover helps to get that last little bit of adhesive residue off the surface of the paint. Um, it takes a little bit of elbow grease, not much, uh, depending on what you use, and it comes right off. Be careful what you use, though. You don't want to do any damage to the paint itself. This stuff I'm using is meant to be used on automotive paint. So, as I promised you guys, for those people out there like me with a little bit of an older vehicle or truck, uh, this is the extra steps we have to take to kind of get rid of those worn in, faded out, uh, I don't know, oxidation marks that were around the emblems themselves. I'm just taking my simple porter cable, dual action polisher, and some Meguiar's heavy duty cutting compound. Um, and honestly, it made really quick work of it. Between the fender and this panel, I maybe had 15 or 20 minutes of polishing total between the two. And if you've done polishing, you'll know it's really not all that much. Um, now, as you can see, I did wait for the sun to go down for this part. Uh, when you're doing this kind of polishing and stuff, you don't want the truck paint really hot. Otherwise, it dries out the compound pretty darn quickly. So that's another little quick tip for you guys. Now I bought this little Porter Cable dual action polisher right around a year ago. I think I paid around 120 bucks for it. I knew I wasn't going to be doing a ton of this kind of work, but I wanted something to uh, save myself the elbow grease and frustration or save myself from having to pay somebody to do stuff like this. So I picked it up on a budget and I gotta say this thing is a sweet little workhorse. Um, by no means do I think you always have to spend top dollar to get a machine that will do the job for you. So if you think you're going to be doing any sort of detailing or uh, small jobs like this one, I would definitely recommend this one. Um, I'm sure there's other options out there, but this one has served me well. Um, I'll link it below if you're interested. All right, so now here you go, using some quick detail spray to wipe off the residual uh, residue of the polishing compound. And you can see just how much smoother it came out. 
Now I know it's dark and I am not trying to hide anything from you guys so I'm going to put some clips in here right at the end in a couple seconds of what the truck looks like in broad daylight and it turned out great. Even for me where I knew exactly where those badges were I can barely barely make them out in daylight which is exactly what I was shooting for. I don't think I could have asked for better results on this and it took such little work which is awesome. So I'm going to wrap up this video here. If you guys found it useful or entertaining, hit that like button down below. It makes a big difference on the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. Like I said, all the stuff I used should be linked down in the description below if you're interested in using the same products. Um, and of course, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel and you want to watch this truck evolve into what it's going to be, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.